In this portion of the Nutritional Supplements Huddle Talks, we will be discussing the risks associated with using dietary supplements. It is a common misconception that supplements are well regulated and are safe and effective. As discussed earlier, the Dietary Supplement Act of 1994 does not require that supplements be determined safe or effective by any governing body before they end up in stores. In reality, the process is actually backwards and the FDA must prove a supplement is unsafe after it's already on the market. Dangers exist in the true purity of supplements. Athletes must be aware that many supplements are determined each year to be tainted. Illegal stimulants and steroids are often added to supplements to intensify the effect. Most commonly, athletes are unaware that these substances are added to their supplement. The added substances carry many health risks and are usually not allowed for use in sport, according to the World Anti-Doping Agency. As stated before, a supplement is considered safe until proven otherwise. Many times, a supplement that's tainted will become extremely popular very fast. In the fitness and performance community, if something works, people will buy it. In order to give you a better idea on tainted supplements, I will overview three examples of supplements that were previously legal that are now banned. Ephedra was an extremely popular supplement, mainly marketed as a weight loss drug. Strength athletes used it to aid in muscular performance. Ephedra is used as an ergogenic aid before workout or taken repeatedly throughout the day to lose weight. Ephedra was banned by the FDA in 2004. They stated there was an unreasonable risk of illness or injury associated with taking ephedra. The basis for the ban was 21 serious events involving two deaths, nine strokes, four heart attacks, one seizure, and five psychiatric problems. As you can see, it does not take many adverse events for a supplement to undergo review for recall. However, this process can take a long time, and during this time, more and more athletes are exposed to danger. Ephedra may still be available from black market sources. To keep athletes aware, some of the common supplements containing ephedra were Blipodrine, Yellow Bullet, Xenadrin, and the original HydroxyCut. Superdrol is another supplement once legal that is now banned. Some common supplements containing Superdraw were Methostadrol, Superdraw 250, Stackaball, Haladrol, SD Extreme, and Mdraw, just to name a few. In October 2011, a company marketing Superdraw, Superior Metabolic Technologies, recalled the supplement Testosterone Booster Uprising 2.0. The FDA informed the company that their supplement contained the steroid Superdraw. However, this company was not the only one selling these supplements. There were many companies selling these supplements, as I explained before. Another company, named Anabolic Resources, pled guilty to knowingly labeling their product to deceive customers and the Food and Drug Administration and labeling Anabolic Resources Superdraw as a dietary supplement even though they knowingly put in a synthetic steroid. There are many problems associated with an athlete taking a supplement tainted with an anabolic steroid. The common side effects of steroid, severe acne, hair loss, oily skin, kidney disease, heart disease, and of course, shrunken testes. Not to mention that steroids are banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency and by the NCAA. More recently, a supplement that is now banned by the FDA that most college-age athletes and recreational athletes are probably familiar with is DMAA or 1,3-dimethylalamine. DMAA is a powerful stimulant similar to amphetamines and was found in the original Jack 3 d OxyElite Pro, Hemorrhage, and the original 1MR. DMAA was very similar to ephedra in that it was found in many pre-workouts and was also used as a weight loss supplement. 
Supplement companies were marketing DMAA as a natural stimulant. However, the FDA determined that DMAA could cause elevated blood pressure, shortness of breath, and even heart attack. The importance of this information is to educate athletes when interested in a supplement to turn to their coach, registered dietitian, or doctor so they can do the proper research to find out if the supplement is right for them.